Welcome to the Welsh Women Workshop and in tonight's episode we're outside the workshop looking at some of the tools and machinery at the Dorset Steam Pit. Just off to see the Dorset Axeman. If you're ever at the Dorset Steam Fair, they're definitely worth a watch. Their display is fantastic. So hopefully we'll get an interview with the leader of the Dorset Axeman after the show. Doesn't hit the log square in. Works on a 40, 45 degree angle. That's the most efficient way of getting through the wood. If you hit it in square, that's where the tree is its strongest. That's where it's expecting to be hit. And... Uh, and you take out a scarf the same length as the diameter of the log. So if you've got a 12 inch log, you take out a 12 inch scarf. And you mark it up in the place that's comfortable to you. And then when you go around the black, you take it out a little bit higher. So where you can cut, when you come to drive the log off, you're driving into what we call clean wood. If you don't, then uh, you'll get the, the thing called wooded and uh, it can cost you time, it can cost you hits and you've got less chance of winning the race. Uh, two blows up, two blows down, follows the line, follows around in a pattern okay. and there you are. So you've got your tree felled, you've got your tree cut into length. Another problem that the timber cutter had, he had to work above the ground. He had to work 10, 15 foot up the, up the tree. Sometimes the trees were fire damaged they were hollow in the bottom. They were no use for the sawmiller. He wouldn't pay you for timber he couldn't use. And uh, they had to devise this method to get above this problem, which is what we call the springboard chop or the tree climb. Now, uh, this here is Joe, say hello, Joe. On the other pole, we got Tom, Tom Redman. Two, three. Now we've already put the pockets in these trees so we can uh, actually use the trees for the whole five days that we're here but you need a 30 degree angle on the top and a flat horizontal uh, horizontal cut on the bottom and uh, so when you drive the board in it actually grips into the grain of the wood and then the weight of the axeman it holds you up there uh, Otherwise, it's the same as cutting the standing block on the ground. It's a little bit more difficult. Your back foot is directly behind you. You can't get the same amount of power and the same amount of um, accuracy. But apart from that, it's exactly the same. And uh, hello, we've got a bit of a problem. Uh, Joe's got a bit of a problem. Out there, right, there you are. Uh, <coughs> Tom's come down. 
he's going up backside and uh, <coughs> Joe's doing a very good job down this end it takes a lot to learn to do the tree uh, if you are cutting the pockets um, which is what they have to do in competition it's uh, it's all a learning curve because you've got to have your boards in the right place you've got to have your axe in the right place uh, because you don't want to be chasing around the tree looking for your boards looking for your axe and uh, but if you're doing that it's all costing you time and you've got less chance of winning the race so, three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen and now they're all away and uh see how that uh at the time to the side of the changes hat and uh went through to the center this chestnut's all right it cuts very well but you've got to cut all your wood. You can't cheat on it, otherwise it'll just split out and it'll uh, come back to bite you. Oh, well, that was close. And you'll see how this saw actually does cut. It actually draws a straw of wood out rather than a sawdust. And that's the raker tooth acting like a little plow that actually rakes the sawdust out of the cut. And there you are. Uh, and before that, they were using them for racing. They was mainly using m tooths which what Matt and Gavin are going to show you. So, Matt, Gavin, if you just draw a disc off, you'll see how this saw actually does cut as well as what the Peg and Razor does. But some sawyers, they prefer m tooths still. Some prefer Peg and Rakers. And now I understand that they're going back and actually developing m tooths now for saw racing, they're upgrading them again and uh, it's that, that's the thing. They cut an inch of timber per second wow. with these saws and we just see how they got on, three. Don't put too much weight on it, keep the saw level on the wood straight between your partner and you'll see how they actually saws that do actually drop. Uh, well, the Peg and Rake got, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I think first of all, we're in the Dorset Axeman. So just a few questions for you, Nick. So yeah. first of all, what got you started in sort of axe competition cutting and things? Uh, what got me started, I first saw wood chopping in 1966 on Blue Peter, uh, which was the first sort of uh, Axeman's or Australian Axeman's tour that come out to this country. I was 10 then and uh, uh, I, was uh, had the ambition, as was then, to one day be a woodman or be an axeman, like what I've done. Fantastic. What sort of advice would you give for people that want to start out in this as a, as a hobby or to progress if they're Any, ready? Anybody who wants to come and see us, we meet every Sunday uh, down at a local village in Beer Regis, uh, Chopping Dock. If anybody wants to start, come and see us. Uh, give us, give me a ring. Our, uh, our numbers, our contact number, is all on Facebook, it's on the, on our website, dorsetaxman.com. Come and see us, let us know, and uh, we'll start to walk. And, and last question, what sort of equipment or axes do you, do you use or would you recommend? We use two of Thai axes now. Uh, they come, they're based in New Zealand, come from any bloke called Eddie Fawcett. Uh, there is lots of axes that are coming onto the market now, like Brute Forge, k steels, Hodge Speed axes, high tests and all the stuff like that. Um, we mainly use two of Thai axes now. Um, which we can buy, we can buy from New Zealand, they come already ground, they do what grind ever you want. But if someone who's starting off, who's training, uh, come and see us and we'll pick you up with a training action. Oh, thank you so much, really appreciate your right. time, especially in this hot weather. That's so, all right. Thank you. That's Cheers. all right. Oh, I hope that goes all right. Yeah. Yeah. So we're almost at the end of our video now and if you have enjoyed it so far please consider subscribing as that really supports me in getting more videos your way. Also please write in the comments if you're liking the Woodworkers Day Out style videos and I can try and make some more of those in the future for you. They're going to finish the video now with the fantastic sheep show and the dancing sheep. Here we go! Yeah! <laughs> well done!
Good boy. You ready, Diego? Yeah, come on in. Yeah, good lad. Oh, work the crowd. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's it. Good boy. Oh, oh good lad. Here we go. Here you go, Sam. Down you go. Up and get. Down you go. Up and get. Look at that. You don't get that body going that quick, I tell you. Here we go, ladies and gents, he's working hard for you. Are you ready, Nobby? Step, step, slide, slide, step, step, slide, slide, step, step, slide, slide, tail, Jimmy. There he is. Good boy. Oh, good girl, Melinda. Look at the little feet on the maid. She's going now. Good girl, Melinda. One more for Dad. Good <laughs> Oh, you're fantastic. These guys are working hard for you, ladies and gents. I ain't got a clue what he's done on the end, but whatever it is, I'd like some. Okay. Good boy. Ladies and gentlemen, we are the Sheep Show. <laughs>